A lawmaker threatened Sid Miller to a duel? It's January 22nd, 2024, and these are your headlines. Yes, you heard me correctly. This is completely wild. In a bizarre text message, State Representative Glenn Rogers threatened Agriculture Commissioner Sid Miller to a duel following Miller's endorsement of his opponent. This exchange was shared today by Miller and shows Glenn Rogers, State Representative Glenn Rogers, texting him on Saturday night shortly after 9 o'clock p.m. He said, and I'll, I'll read it for you here in the text message, he said, you are a bought and paid for pathetic narcissist. If you had any honor, you would challenge me or any of my Republican colleagues to a duel instead of strutting around posting pictures with a rifle threatening to shoot rhinos. He said, a rhino is any conservative Republican not bought and paid for by Wilkes and Dunn. You are an embarrassment to agriculture and the state of Texas. Kiss my, and well, you can guess the rest. Now, Sid Miller says that it appears the campaign is getting to him. In a statement today, Miller said, if he's this mad just because I endorsed his primary opponent, there's no telling what he will do once I start campaigning with him. And as for the duel, well, Miller gladly accepted with one caveat. He said, as the challenge party, I get to choose the weapon. I choose words. Let's debate how you and your rhino buddies sold out the conservative cause. This is absolutely bizarre. It's unhinged, frankly. We haven't seen anything like this. It's unhinged. It's bizarre. It's crazy. It's absolutely crazy to see a sitting lawmaker using this kind of rhetoric. But maybe he has reason to be scared. You know, Representative Rogers is opposed in the Republican primary election by Mike Olcott, who has the endorsement of Governor Greg Abbott, Senator Ted Cruz, Attorney General Ken Paxton, of course, Agriculture Commissioner Sid Miller. He's also endorsed by True Texas Project, Grassroots America, We the People. The list goes on. And indeed, Glenn Rogers has had a turbulent few weeks on the campaign trail. Texas Scorecard recently caught Rogers touting fake endorsements from elected officials who didn't support his campaign. We also reported, literally, we talked about it on Friday. He was also on the receiving end of the only campaign contribution reported by disgraced former Speaker Joe Strauss's PAC last year. In more unusual election news, a candidate for an open Senate seat in North Texas says a fraudulent donation was made in his name to House Speaker Dade Phelan. Chase Yarbrough, who's an attorney and Air Force veteran, was shown on a recent campaign finance report as having sent a $75 donation to Speaker Phelan on December 24th. That was just days after he filed to run for Senate District 30. Yarbrough, however, has categorically denied making any donation to Phelan. He said, while our team is still gathering information, this appears to be an attempt to smear me with our party's grassroots. He also emphasized his role as counsel to State Senator Angela Paxton during the impeachment trial of her husband, Attorney Gen General Ken Paxton, that was, of course, championed by Phelan. He said, I was proud to serve Senator Paxton as her general counsel during the impeachment trial. I agreed with Representative Schaefer, Smithy, and others that the House's rushed impeachment process set a dangerous precedent. Now, if the donation is indeed fraudulent, and it certainly looks that way now, the culprit may be guilty of more than just dirty campaign tricks. That's right. This Texas State Election Code states that a person may not knowingly make or authorize a political expenditure in the name of or on behalf of another without their knowledge. Doing so is a Class A misdemeanor. Yarbrough said this false attack won't work. The truth about where I stand and have always stood is publicly available for anyone to read. And to the conspirators who committed this fraud, your bullying and dishonesty will fail. My loyalty is with the voters of Senate District 30. I will not be pressured into silence by deceptive tactics. Senate District 30 up in North Texas is being vacated by outgoing State Senator Drew Springer. Yarborough is one of four Republicans competing for the open seat alongside Carrie Damore, Brett Hagenboo, and Cody Clark. If you're not watching the Luke Messias show, then you are not as engaged as everybody else is in Texas who's trying to make a difference, knowing exactly what's going on so that they can take action on the things that really matter. Guys, watch us on the Roku app for Texas Scorecard. Watch us on YouTube. Listen to us on Apple Podcasts, Spotify. Get engaged, get more informed, so together we can actually make a bigger difference on things that matter for the future of Texas. God bless you. Last up, most voters in Texas are already gearing up for a rematch between President Joe Biden and former President Donald Trump this November. 
That's according to a new Emerson College poll survey commissioned by Nexstar Media Group, shows nearly seven of every 10 Republican primary voters in Texas are backing Trump, with only 11% supporting former UN Ambassador Nikki Haley and 7% vying for Florida Governor Ron DeSantis. That was, of course, taken just days before he dropped out of the race. Another 14% say they're supporting someone else or they are undecided. Biden is similarly running away with support among state Democrats at 72%. Minor candidates Marion Wilson, a Houston-based author and Congressman Dean Phillips of Michigan are combining for 11 percent, and a whopping 17 percent of Democrat voters say they are also undecided. Now, in the likely scenario where the two rivals make it back to the general election, Trump has the support of 49 percent of voting Texans, with Biden carrying only 41 percent of their support. That would serve as a significant improvement for Trump in Texas from even 2020, if the eight point percentage margin holds. He won the state by around five and a half points at the time, 52 percent to Biden's 46 and a half percent. Texas's primary occurs on March 5th and the general election is set for November 5th. You can check out more of today's stories at texasscorecard.com.